بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين uh, My intention for doing this program was to guys, get you guys in the habit of praying Fajr and Jama'ah mm -hmm. and I know because of the pandemic a lot of people in the world are not able to go to the masjid mm -hmm. uh, or get in a better habit of praying because you know there's nobody keeping us on the schedule so mm -hmm. we get a little lazy and crazy yeah. so mm -hmm. um, hopefully this is a way of encouraging families around the world to pray Fajr together, mm -hmm. uh, and then they can, you know, they're not in the same time zone as us, so they can probably maybe watch a recording of mm -hmm. our, our conversations with each other. Or they can pray uh, Isha together. Uh-huh. They can pray Isha together. Or they can pray Isha together. Um, and then they can join in with us, inshallah. So what I wanted to start with today is to ask you guys some questions about what you know about some basic things. How many prayers in Islam? Five. Every day? Five. Five. Well. Allah could have just said in the Quran, pray five times a day. Mm -hmm. And here are the times. And give us the detail, like, like a teacher does, mm -hmm. right? He didn't do that. Yeah. He didn't talk to the Prophet mm -hmm. like that about when to pray and how to pray. He talked about prayers in a very different way. Mm -hmm. The first thing I want you to, to think about as we go through this week is our religion is not just about what Allah says, mm -hmm. it's about how Allah says it. Mm. It's about how Allah says it. Yeah. We have to pay attention to how Allah is saying something. Mm -hmm. Because when we pay attention to how Allah is saying something, maybe we learn some things that is more than just the what. There's yeah. a lot more being said in the how. Mm -hmm. So, and, and also when Allah says it. So mm -hmm. there's the how Allah says it, and there's the yeah. when yeah. Allah yeah. says it. And mm -hmm. I want you to keep that in mind all the yeah. time. So when you read the Quran, and you read any translation even, mm -hmm. you should ask yourself, how did Allah say that? What were other ways of saying that? Why did, how come Allah said it this way? Mm -hmm. And when did Allah say this? Yeah. Right? So, let me ask you another basic question. When was the Prophet ﷺ, what two cities were the Prophet ﷺ preaching the Quran? Makkah and Medina. And do you know why he left Makkah? Mm -hmm. yeah. Any idea? Uh, because uh, they're torturing him, and like, so he had to leave. Yeah, it got to a point where they were ready to kill him. Mm -hmm. They were basically ready to kill him. Yeah. When that happened, and things got so bad that they were actually scheming on killing him, and it got really, really bad, mm -hmm. Allah revealed some surahs at the very, very end of the Prophet's time in Makkah. Mm. So this is like code red emergency time. Oh, okay. And he has to escape Makkah, basically. Eventually he has to escape Makkah without letting them know that mm -hmm. he's leaving, mm -hmm. because if they find out, they'll kill him on the road, or they'll kill him before he leaves, yeah. things like that. So you have to leave covertly, right? So he says, And they're almost at a point where they're about to terrorize you and get you rid of, get, get you away from this land, mm -hmm. okay? Um, and so as he's talking to him about that, that you know what that means? That the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had a hard time since he started preaching, mm -hmm. but it's gotten harder than it ever was. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. It's gotten tougher than it ever was. And then he says this. salata li duluk shamsi Establish the prayer from the time the sun reaches the half point. Mm -hmm. So that, which is basically some scholars say this is talking about Dhuhr because it reaches the half point of the sky. Mm -hmm. okay. Right? This half, that half, mm -hmm. and it reaches the half point, right? Ila oh, okay. layli until the night becomes dark. Meaning what are what are our what are our prayers? Dhuhr, yeah. Asr, Asr Maghrib, Isha. Isha, all got covered in Duluk shams ila ghasaqil layl until so from the sun reaching the half point that's mm -hmm. Dhuhr time yeah. and then all the way to the night gets deep that would be Isha time mm -hmm. so he says establish the prayer from this hour from this time mm -hmm. all the way through to that time mm -hmm. but one prayer is missing Maghrib or no no Maghrib Fajr Maghrib's good yeah Fajr Fajr's missing right mm -hmm. so he, here's what he says then he says wa Quran al Fajri and the Quran of Fajr Mm. Establish those prayers, mm -hmm. and then he didn't say establish the prayer mm -hmm. and the prayer of Fajr. Mm -hmm. He said and the Quran of Fajr. Mm -hmm. So this is about not what Allah says, but how, how he it. says it. He could have just said, "Pray five prayers," mm -hmm. but which prayer did he single out of all the other prayers? Fajr. He prayed. He singled out Fajr prayer, and when he singled it out, you learned a little bit of Arabic now. Quran al Fajr is mudaf mudaf. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's a Quran of Fajr. Yeah. As opposed to Salat of Fajr. Yeah, yeah. What Allah is telling us is, oh, every, every prayer has Salah in it. Mm -hmm. Every prayer has Salah in it. But 
Fajr has a connection with the Quran like no other prayer. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we recite the Quran in Dhuhr mm -hmm. and in Asr and in Maghrib yeah. and in Isha. Mm -hmm. But Allah is telling us there's something special about the Quran and what time? Fajr, Fajr, Fajr. time. Mm -hmm. Quran and Fajr time. This, this is a special time. Mm -hmm. It's a special time for lots of reasons. I'll tell you one reason. Mm -hmm. Uh, the last prophet, do you know the last prophet that came before Muhammad uh, Isa, right? Right. So Isa is about six, almost six centuries, or maybe a little more than six centuries, mm -hmm. before the Prophet <laughs> And do you know what happened with the message of Isa alayhi salam? Like, you know what happened with our message, right? The Prophet <laughs> was given Quran, mm -hmm. but six centuries later, did anybody call him the son of God and turned it into a different religion altogether and no. turned masjids into some other mm -hmm. temples? Did that happen with our religion? No. No. But Isa alayhi salam had the same message, right? Mm -hmm. But what happened over time? What did they turn it into? A completely different religion, right? Yeah. So Allah describes that as it's been six centuries of night. Mm. Okay? Kalla wal qamar wal layli is adbar, like if adbar, when, when the night becomes dark. Oh, okay. And then finally the Quran came to restore the guidance of Allah, which is the same as light. Yeah. So Allah describes those six centuries in one place as a long night, and mm. finally the morning has come. Oh, okay. Meaning, finally, the Qur'an has come. Yeah. So, even the coming of the Qur'an is compared to what? Fajr time. Fajr time yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So, Fajr is a super important time in our religion. Now, it's, you know, if you don't know that, if you don't hear how Allah says it, what would you think growing up as a child or even as an adult? Oh, there's five prayers. And mm -hmm. these are the five prayers. Mm -hmm. Done. Yeah. <laughs> right? You don't think more about that. Mm -hmm. But he says, Qur'an and Fajr. But then he says something more. When did I say Allah gave this to him? What were the Meccans trying to do to the Prophet? To yeah, and it was close to the time where they couldn't stand him living in Mecca anymore. So yeah. he's about to be, maybe they're, they're trying to kill him or mm -hmm. at least expel him. So they got all eyes on him, right? Mm -hmm. Basically, because they have eyes on him, he's being watched all the time. Mm -hmm. And we know that because if you know the story, when he left Mecca, he had to leave secretly. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So he's watched all the time, and this is what Allah says. Establish the Qur'an of Fajr time. Inna Qur'an al-Fajri kana mashhuda. The Qur'an of Fajr is being witnessed. Mm. The Qur'an of Fajr is being watched. Yeah. It's being witnessed. Mm -hmm. Allah is saying, as if Allah is saying, of course Allah watches everything. Mm -hmm. And Allah watches all, all of what we do, including our prayers. But it's as if Allah is saying that He sends battalions and armies and legions of angels mm -hmm. that are especially assigned to watch the Prophet ﷺ yeah. pray Fajr. Mm -hmm. And if he usually has security, everything okay? They don't see you? Oh, Steve, you mean? Oh, I didn't hit the broadcast button. I oh. just hit record. Uh, that's okay. It's being recorded anyway. We'll just post it later. It's fine. Um, so, the uh, what was I saying? Something about Islam. Uh, uh, the, the prophet being her trying to be persecuted and stuff like that. Yeah. So when he's being persecuted, what does Allah say? The Fajr prayer is being what? Uh, being watched. Watched. Yeah. In other words, this is the most important part. Everything he's going through mm -hmm. is. He's constantly thinking, I'm being watched. They're after me. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, he has to worry about that. Yeah. Yeah. And Allah says, no, I don't want you to worry about that. Just worry about the fact that you're being watched by the angels when you pray Fajr. Mm. It's Allah's way of saying what? I got you. Yeah. I got you. So long as you pray Fajr, I'll take care of everything else. Mm. That's what Allah is saying. Now, why do you think I'm telling you that? So and telling myself that? So we can pray Fajr? So we can, if we all are going to have problems in our life. Yeah. I'm pretty sure our problems aren't going to be as big as the Prophet said, I'm almost being killed. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And if Allah can protect His Messenger with the Fajr prayer, mm -hmm. then that means if we want protection of Allah in our life, mm -hmm. people can't do anything to us when we hold on to Fajr, Fajr prayer. It's a special time mm -hmm. to connect to Allah's protection. Okay, mm -hmm. so we'll stop the halaqa here.